here I am. I've got the got the FX streamline with me. Got a good trigger stick for a steady aim. I'm looking for some spurring. One of the biggest geese in southern Africa. And then I'm also looking for the Egyptian goose. I pulled myself this this small blind close to a dam. Much to the waiting game. I can hear them out far. They're basically grazing in the in the maize fields. So I'm gonna try and get them about 20 meters out and take a perfect headshot. Right, so what I've done, I moved my, my vehicle all the way over there to distract the Egyptian goose from not going this side. And I'm heading to my little hide that I've made hoping to find something because what they do is they fly over me and they go sit in the maize fields as you can see the maize that we have cut so they like to feed on on these things like as you can see yeah some old corn or maize and that is what they're coming to feed on so uh, I yeah I can hear them in the air they are on their way. Let's see what we can find. This is my setup. As you can see, I've covered my rifle in camouflage tape. I'm sitting inside here. Beautiful. Right. So let's see if we can find it some of these Egyptian geese so uh, yeah let's sit tight right I see one there's one on his way in the kitchen I had a, a lovely hunt today getting a beautiful Egyptian goose uh, male which um, I just cleaned I didn't show much of the cleaning process uh, because it was quite dark outside um, my cameras do not work or function very well at night anyway um, I've got the Egyptian goose I like to you know, every year and there I just like to make a slice or two in the breasts so I can put some nice spices up in there. The, the main dish will be curry. I'm going to make a curry stew from the Egyptian goose. Um, so the main ingredient, actually today I'm only going to make like a brine. So I'm going to brine it up for a couple of hours and then tomorrow I'll I'll be cooking it so I will be putting in some just a normal raja curry powder I also don't measure too much I throw in according to my feeling um, I have done this a couple of times so I know more or less how much to throw in then I've just got some nice Portuguese chicken spice I like to throw that over, it's also really nice. Right, crushed garlic, just some crushed garlic, not too much. All right, rosemary as well, just gives it a bit of a, a beautiful taste. Right, 
There's the rosemary, some nutmeg, which well is really good for the game. Put some nutmeg just, you can even put it on the sides as well. On top, oregano is also really good. It gives it a nice, nice flavor to the gamey meat, which helps quite a lot. Right, then I have some whole peppercorns that I will, I will be putting in. As you can see, they are just whole peppercorns. I'll just be putting them in. Right, also very important is coarse salt. I like to put enough coarse salt on, especially that it's gonna be a brine. Put enough. Right, then just about five or six bay leaves. That just gives it a nice flavor as well. Balsamic vinegar, also really good. Just a nice amount of balsamic vinegar, not too much. You don't want it to be overpowered by the balsamic vinegar, and then just a bit of Worcester sauce as well. You can just dab it over right and then that one I fill it up with water to complete the brine and then we will be leaving it for about 12 hours and then tomorrow we'll be putting it in the pot so there I filled it up with water I did add some parsley as well as fine chopped parsley there's the final result and it looks fantabulous good morning this is the next day the Egyptian goose I took it out of the the fridge as you can see it's been brining I have turned it a couple of times it looks really really beautiful um, all right so this morning I'm going to fry up some onion, Just put in some oil in the pan, get some nice butter, Just put in some nice butter, beautiful, okay, then I'm going to put in my onion, That looks really good. This is a new spice to me. I normally use the Paco curry paste. I'm gonna give this one a go. It's Patakas, the original butter chicken spice paste. So what we do, while we are frying the onions, we're going to put in a half of this bottle it's also a type of a curry paste and then we'll give it a fry up you can smell the spice already right i'm just going to put some crushed garlic in as well I don't have enough garlic uh, cloves. If you can have a close look this side, there's some garlic cloves. I just like to give them a bit of a, a press. And then I will add them as well. Then I've got just some normal ginger powder. My fresh ginger is finished. All right. Now I'm gonna stir it up. Going for two to three minutes looks very good. We're gonna take it out, put it in our pot. If you come and have a closer look, I am using a slow cooker today, I'm not using a pressure cooker, it's just a normal logic um, slow cooker. So I'm gonna put it on a high, high speed and then I'm still gonna leave it for 
probably 12 hours um, but I'll keep checking up up on it to see if it, it's gonna cook um, away the water just to keep adding some water so um, I'll see you guys in a minute okay now I'm gonna put it in with the slow cooker this curry smell has gone through my whole house that's done just put it off there okay what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take out the Egyptian goose. He looks really, really good, as you can see. Beautiful Egyptian goose. I'm gonna try and fit him whole into the pot. Let me have a look. I'm sure once he cooks, he will, he will cook down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to catch in my spices. As you can see there at the bottom, it's most of the spice. good stuff this is what I want I want to keep this I know you get some bags I'm not exactly sure what they call them but you can put your spices your coarse spices your leaves and so on you can put into that bag and then put it directly into, into the pot as well and it absorbs very well and it doesn't float all over it just gives the, the spices from, from the bag. Now I'm going to put some of the spice, some of the brine I used just for it to cook in. Okay, and I will be checking up on it probably every two hours or so because it is slow cooking to tender up the meat. Right, guys, one thing I can tell you about the slow cooker, it got its name perfectly right. Um, this Egyptian goose has been on for probably, I think, 17, 18 hours. It is really looking beautiful. If you can look here, it's falling off of the bone. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, we'll get back to that in a moment. I've made some noodles. I'm gonna put some noodles in the plate. Right. Then I just wanna dish up some of this. The smell of this curry is beautiful. Really beautiful. As you can see, the onions are still here. The onions. The slow cooker really done its job very well. This is gonna be fantastic, fantastic. The bones, I'll, I'll just take them out as I eat, but the meat is super, super soft and tender. Lovely. Okay, guys, and then another thing is what I've realized, curry, um, it likes um, something like like this. It's a hot chutney, um, a platyan, something in that direction that you just put on over the top. It just gives it a, a really, really sweet, good taste to it. I did put in some corn as well, or maize, and then I'll just top it a bit with some greens, just to give it a bit of color. But further than that, I'm gonna enjoy this now. Beautiful. Okay, there you have it. Egyptian goose, I shot it 
two to three days ago. I put it in the brine for probably two to three days. Then I cooked it for up to 17 hours in the slow cooker. So it's super tender. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Stay tuned. Please guys hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and you'll see as well there's a notification button as well. Hit that button so every time I post a video you'll be getting it first. So cheers! South Africa's largest goose, the Spowin goose, will probably be one of my future videos. I'm really excited about that. My name is Evan Smith and you're watching Bose Guns Rods and Reels.